Hi, this is another segment of Hudson Health. Um, good evening and happy holidays. Uh, we have the esteemed pleasure of having our Director of Health and Human Services, Stacey Flanagan, who's been under a lot of pressure and we all should commend her for the amount of work that she's done in the last nine months. It's been more than challenging for her. So thank you so much, Stacy. So there's a few questions that we had. And, you know, the first one was that, you know, I know you guys have done an excellent job. I, as a resident of Jersey City, have received my masks, which I thank you guys for. Um, but what we want to know is that what is going to be the rollout scheme for Jersey City regarding the vaccines and all this other stuff? Oh, great. Um, well, I don't know exactly when we're taped that the, this goes live, but um, while we're speaking, the first round of individuals are getting their vaccines across um, six hospitals in the state of New Jersey. We have a plan in Jersey City that the mayor's ready to announce. Um, we are trying to make sure that we have a location in every community. We're looking to open six point of distribution centers for vaccines. Uh, the goal from the state is to reach about 70% of the adult population of our city over the next six months. Uh, we anticipate working very closely with our federally qualified health centers and our hospitals. So our hospitals are getting the vaccine first. Uh, they're going to be doing their own staff and the affiliated staff first. Uh, we're working with the county on uh, healthcare workers across the county. The state is working with Walgreens and CVS for uh, nursing homes and nursing home staff. And we're going to be working with partners to make sure that we have open sites available to the residents and education in all the languages that our community speaks. Uh, we'll have a medic on call um, for any concerns post the required 15 minutes to sit after your vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will um, start a follow up for the um, 28 uh, days, we're, we're presuming to get um, the Moderna here in Jersey City. Excellent. And we are um, trying really hard to make sure that we are on point with the um, refrigeration in every location because some of our pod locations are city buildings, some are um, possible county buildings, school buildings. And so we're gonna be in six different public buildings uh, that are fairly accessible. And we wanna make sure that we combat the fear, um, start educating on, you know, how can we help people break down that barrier and then the follow-up in case people after their first vaccine shot um, gets ill and then have greater fear of returning for the second. So and that's, I think that's you know, the some biggest of problem concerns. we're having as well as physicians in the community yeah. is the educational piece. You know, they have questions, they want to get involved. I have some patients that are calling to make appointments for the vaccine when it's not even here. And yes. <laughs> then we have patients who don't want to have anything to do with a vaccine. So my biggest concern yes. is getting that educational piece out to our community. So we started um, this week, our staff is doing small workshops uh, for the whole department. So we're first training our other um, teams. So, you know, we have a really comprehensive department here. So we don't just handle health, we do health and human services. So we have a whole you know, group that deals with veterans, a team of division for immigrants, a division for seniors. And we know that those are specific targeted populations that are gonna have a lot of different questions and that we need to make sure that we have the right answers. Like, can I go to my VA hospital or do I have to wait in this line or is there veteran preference? Is there, and so there's a lot of things that we still don't know um but we also know that seniors 
um, are having, you know, more difficulty leaving the home because there's a lot of concern and would prefer us to show up at their door like we've been doing uh, for COVID testing. Um, this is a little bit more complex um, and anywhere where we can accommodate things like that, we're going to try to. Um, we know that the both hospitals have been really um, incredible support for us and uh, we're gonna lean on, you know, how we can help support them um, to do some more public work. So, uh, you know, possibly Greenville and adding locations downtown. Um, we have some locations that are pretty standard health department locations. So, you know, we expect that will be in our building up in uh, the Heights. Uh, it's completely empty right now. Um, in fact, we um, gave up some space and made a food pantry Stacey, there. We're, we're, we're going to take a short break we, and we'll reconnect okay. in a few seconds. Thank you. We have to be able to police ourselves because we don't want anybody to tarnish our badge. When internal affairs complaints are not handled properly, the public may believe that most officers commit crimes, when in fact that's not true. Most officers are professional. Most officers do not commit crimes. Um, if, the com if complaints aren't taken properly and the community that we serve doesn't have a trust in the police department, I mean, th th there has to be legitimacy. Um, if, if the community doesn't trust the police, how could we effectively serve them? by having a really comprehensive internal affairs unit that handles the complaints properly and people have trust in, in the system, it enables us to do our entire job as a police department much better. We need the community as much as they need us. So that citizen that has lost trust in the community could be a very important witness for us tomorrow. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away. From any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care, no appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. Welcome back to Hudson Health. We're here with the esteemed uh, honor of having Stacey Flanagan, the Director of Health and Human Services. And we're just going to talk about a few more topics, including COVID testing. I think you guys have done a great job under Phillips administration, Stacey, um, by just having strategically placed these COVID mobile units all over Jersey City. The accessibility is great. The turnaround's great and the fact that they're there to educate the people that are getting tested is great. So I wanna thank you and I want you to tell everybody, the audience of where it's situated and how they can go in and how easy it really is. Yeah, so um, you know, in the beginning, we couldn't get access to a significant number of tests. So we only had two sites and those sites were paid for directly by the city. Uh, and we wound up getting that money reimbursed by CARES. Uh, we only have one site that we pay direct, and so we often push people um, to Marin because we there weren't a lot of places doing testing. Now, the CARES Act allows for insurance to pay 100% of testing, and so many providers have offered to um, forego accepting payment for anyone who doesn't have insurance. And uh, we started pulling in mobile units and working with different partners. So we have about seven different labs working in partnership across the city. I believe we have 17 different locations now. Uh, two are run directly by the New Jersey Department of Health's team. One is a Binex Now rapid test uh, in partnership with the United Way. And one is the saliva, uh, the Abbott Lab, uh, Rutgers test uh, that we're doing at the Bethune Center. And those are really uh, rather quick tests. So the rapid is 15 minutes. Uh, the saliva, um, we issued some yesterday. People got their results within 10 hours. So wow. um, we know that those are even, you know, incredibly quick and we use them here at the city when we see something happening and we're working with the community because they're self-administered. So you just need a cell phone, someone to hand you a test, 
can handle it yourself, put it into the bag and we drop it off in Piscataway. So that's really quick and the lab is local. Then mm -hmm. we have some partners, you know, we've had some councilmen and some freeholders. So in the beginning, um, freeholder Walker came to us and said, I want to do testing in my community. He connected us with um, a partnership uh, and they came to do some tests in the um, park across from Team Walker. And then now um, freeholder O'Day um, hosts uh I think they're rolling out now to everyday testing in the South Hudson Civic Association site at West Side Avenue. That um, lab is Fusion Labs. They're doing an incredible job and they're working with the uh, all the local um, construction sites and those unions around um, the trades to make sure that they're getting on-site testing. So that's something really cool that we just developed with lots of partners. And so anywhere we can engage someone to say, you know, it's time because many people weren't doing testing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we have about five sites that are appointment only and the other 12 sites are uh, first come first serve. And there's- We know you that know, you're doing the, honestly, all the best job because <laughs> if you look at the hospitals in Bergen County, they're packed. Mm -hmm. And in Jersey they're City, packed. they're still okay. You know, yeah. we're doing pretty good. I mean, I think we've done yeah. a good job with like getting the word out, especially with the masks. And and I know for sure that the mask use is gonna decrease the transmission of influenza as well. You know, so I yeah. think it's a win-win for all of us. I do too, and, and I think you both know because you're, you know, the physicians actually in the front line with the individuals that are coming to you sick and don't really know what to do. And I think we've also trained people a little bit more on like, when to go to the hospital um you know like it's better you stay home for a few days really understand what your body's doing make sure you're getting enough liquids but if you feel something around your breath that's not right you know don't don't take that extra trip because you can only you know get exposed to something else if you're you know not have covid that actually was my fear most of the time. <laughs> right, I was in right. this office and I was like, I'm not getting enough water. I'm having like stomach pain. What's going on with me? Um, <laughs> I agree with you 100%. I mean, at this point, we were, I was just counting the number of COVID patients I have that I'm treating at home. And I have about 22 patients. Some are bad, some are okay, some are totally asymptomatic. But I think that educational piece is extremely important and just, you know, giving that um, reassurance to the patients that you're okay. Don't go to the hospital if you don't need to. But yes, there is a point where you do go to the hospital where you can't breathe and you have a shortness of breath and you have other issues because we don't want to tax our uh, hospital system either. You know, uh, the good thing is that they're managing it very well in the hospital. The patients are being discharged healthy. But are there deaths happening? Yes, absolutely. They are continuing to, uh, you know, die. I think New Jersey lost 97 patients today, yeah. you know, to COVID. So yeah. we still need to be and, very and vigilant across, on this. Yeah, I think across the board and something that I found rather interesting is, you know, I look at the numbers every morning from both hospitals in Jersey City and uh, they both pull from other cities too. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, true, Christ true. has people coming in from Union City, uh, North Bergen, uh, Hoboken, and Jersey City Medical Center, some people, you know, from Bayonne. And um, so we don't have an accurate, like, how many are residents that are in the hospital, but uh, the hospitals have been very on top of um, kind of figuring out, like, how can we work better together? Once we figured that out in the very beginning about giving us the data, making sure that we know how many ventilators you have, what you might need, how we can coordinate, we started stockpiling. So our Office of Emergency Management has actually been incredible during this. And, the, you know, we couldn't do this without fire, police, the innovation team. We had a lot of people helping the Department of Health and Human Services get through this, um, you know, because... What we saw, and I think is like another major discussion to have is the economic fallout on the other mm -hmm. side that's also impacting health. And some of that is the food insecurity in our community yeah, um, and the decisions that families are making. Um, 
in feeding their families. And so we saw our Meals on Wheels triple over the last nine months. We're delivering food to hundreds of families on a weekly basis that are just impacted by COVID. We saw a lot of immigrant families in the beginning because they didn't qualify for unemployment or didn't get benefits um, in the traditional way of food stamps and, and stuff like that. And so we've seen such a stark increase there. And we started seeing families stop going to pick up the school food. And, uh, and so we had to really work around that and we created a, a food security task force um, with partners across the whole city and, and some across the county to move food rather quickly and um, spent a lot of money kind of supplying farmers markets um, and then local restaurants so that we can deliver meals with partners like Logisticare and VIA. It's been really amazing what we were able to do in a short period of time to move lots of food. So um, we saw that it was really important that people got fresh food um, mm -hmm. because a lot of people were getting a lot of canned and a lot of things from um, the pantry setting that wasn't fresh. And so we really focused on that. Um, majority during the summer, but now we, when we deliver to people's homes, we make sure that at least one of the boxes of food that we deliver is uh, all fresh fruits and vegetables. Wow. So you have such a multifaceted job. God bless you. Thank you so much, Stacey, for everything. <laughs> I don't even talk about animal control because that's been a very Thank difficult Thank you so much. Thank you. You're, God bless you. We Thank wish you, you so the, much. whatever we can do to help. Please let us know. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much Will for do. coming on the show. You're amazing. All right, Thank we'll you so send much. you over some maps so you can hand them out to some people in your uh, network as well. That would be great. Thank you so much, Thank Stacey. you so much, okay. Stacey. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Hudson TMA reminds you that if you are going to ride your bike after dark, you must wear the proper attire. Can you see me? How about me? It's more difficult to ride at night but if you have to, make sure you can be seen. Check this out. I'm wearing white, but it's not enough because I'm still difficult to see. No matter what time of day you ride, always wear bright clothing. But at night, you really need to wear reflective or retroreflective gear. If you don't have any, buy some retroreflective tape and put it on your shoes, your jacket, and your helmet. It helps reflect light back to the driver of a car. Make sure your bike has reflectors. And you need a headlight and a tail light. That's the best way to get noticed in the dark. And it's the law. Remember, the sooner a driver can see you and recognize you, the sooner they can react. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service, it's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Hi, welcome back to our segment for Hudson Health. My name is Dr. Amir Syed. Um, here accompanied with my co-host, Dr. Sakiba Syed. Um, and we're just going to follow up on things that we discussed with uh, the Director of Health and Human Services, um, Stacey Flanagan. And she brought up a lot of good points, you know, and she brought up the fact that how accessible it's becoming to get COVID tested. So what we want to recommend is that, you know, take advantage of these. They're free. It's free to get tested. You know, insurances are covering it. Everybody's covering it. Okay, the fact that you shouldn't have to pay to get COVID tested. There's multiple mobile unit sites that are available and the turnaround test period is very good. And like you said, at the Mary Bethune Center, mm -hmm. you know, you can get results within 10 hours. 
it's a saliva test that Rutgers started. I got it done, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's a, it's a very good thing for the community to know about. Because the earlier you know about it, the earlier you can notify your physician and they can treat you for it at home instead of you going to the hospital. The second thing we want to highlight is that don't let this corona affect or delay the treatment of care. That's very important for you guys to know that. You know, it's if you have ongoing cancer treatment going on or you have a procedure scheduled or anything of the sort, the hospitals are very, very, very well disconnected. You know, like, so you have your COVID wings and then you have all the other services that are completely available. So please don't delay because that could be catastrophic. You know, uh, where you can get COVID is going to these gatherings, going to Walmart, going to shopping centers, these malls uh, without proper mask wearing techniques, without, you know, managing your social distancing. That's where the threat of COVID is. And I think it's extremely important for the community to understand the more we get tested, the more we know who's infected and who's not, the better we are in maintaining the safety of the community. Um, the earlier you let your physician know, and like I told Stacy, I mean, I have 22 patients that I'm treating at home at this point, and they are well. Some are sick, some are okay, and some are asymptomatic. And you know, like the Thanksgiving surge is being apparent now, and you mm -hmm. can see the numbers going up. So I know it's a very difficult time for all of us together, but please limit your gatherings to your bubble. It's very, very important for you to know that. And please try to avoid travel. We're almost there. There's light at the end of the tunnel, even though it's a long tunnel, but I think the vaccine rollout is gonna be very, very good. We have the Moderna vaccine, mm -hmm. just like Stacy was saying, that's coming out, that'll be more accessible in doctor's offices and it'll be widespread. So please do yourself a favor, limit your gatherings, especially the indoor gatherings, wash your hands very, very well, 20 seconds. Um, any soap is fine. You know, a lot of people have questions about should I use antibacterial soap or, no, any soap is fine. You know, it's a very, what we call lipophilic um, virus. So it dies with contact with soap and water. Wear your masks and limit your gatherings, please. And I was looking at the Jersey City website, the City of Jersey City uh, website. It's extremely informative. I mean, you have that website online and I think everybody should visit it. They have great information, great services that are available to the community. And they have a number where you can call if you have symptoms and your doctor is not available or you don't feel comfortable calling anybody else. There is a phone number that the city will answer and they are trained health professionals that will guide you on what to do. So I, I went through that website yesterday and I was pretty much, uh, you know, in awe on how well orchestrated it is and how well put together it is. They've done a great job. They've done they, a great they job. They really have. You know, I personally want to thank Mayor Fulop, mm -hmm. Stacey Flanagan, their entire team. Absolutely. Uh, Mayor Sacco, Mayor Stack, for all the efforts that all the Hudson County mayors have done to come together collectively to take care of this. Thank you so much. And we wish to see you again uh, for another segment for Hudson Health. It has actually changed my life. You know, it's wonderful to be in recovery. I'm also a grandpa, a great grandpa. I found joy in being abstinent from use. You know, I'm a family member. I'm a productive member of society. Um, I'm a dog owner things like that, I'm a fiance. So I think that recovery means on such a broad scale, there's so many different layers to what recovery means to me. We're just like everyone else, we have heart and soul. Um, it's just that we've, we have the substance abuse disorder and that we're dealing with that. And if anything, it makes us a little bit stronger. The most important thing for people in the communities to know is that they're just like anyone else. And that they don't necessarily want to be doing the things that they're doing and it's a chronic illness and it's a chronic disease that needs to be addressed as so. Welcome back to Hudson Health. I'm Dr. Syed. I'm accompanied by my sister, Dr. Syed, as well. Um, and now we're just going to touch upon some topics regarding the vaccine. 
Uh, right now, there's two vaccines that have been approved for emergency use by the FDA. First one is the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, today, New Jersey was the first person, uh, state patient mm -hmm. to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it was a nurse, a critical care nurse at UMDNJ. And we're proud to say that, you know, she got it. And I think it was, it was her, her birthday. birthday as well today, yeah. too. So it's, it's, it's a big deal. And God bless her soul. We wish her well. But we just want to talk about the different vaccines that are available and that are coming up and what you can expect uh, and when you can expect it. So we have uh, the Pfizer vaccine, which was approved about a few days ago, and Moderna's approved as of today, and we should start receiving uh, shipments probably by next week. Um, these vaccines are 94.5 to 95% effective, and uh, the Pfizer vaccine is two doses, and so is the Moderna. The Pfizer vaccine is 21 days apart. The Moderna vaccine is uh, 28 days apart. It's important to understand you must get both doses, you know, and, and there are going to be side effects. Side effects are minimal. So, um, you know, just like with any vaccine, because it's recruiting and, and boosting your own immune system to, to become stronger to fight off this infection if it's ever exposed to it. Uh, common side effects are injection site pain, fatigue, malaise, flu-like symptoms, very small, very transient. Uh, they have data for the past two months on people who have gotten the vaccine uh, in the phase three trial and they were not any significant uh, issues at all. So I think that's reassurance. I mean, I think it's extremely important that we understand that at least 70% of the population needs to get vaccinated and it's when they get vaccinated will attain that herd immunity to prevent the transmission and progression of this disease. The fact that today was the first day that we got the vaccine um, into our community is, is, I think that's light at the end of the tunnel. You Absolutely. Know? We both come from, we were both trained at St. Michael's Medical Center in mm -hmm. Newark, New Jersey, which is a very, very big infectious disease hospital. And with the honor of being trained under Dr. Leon Smith, who's one of the greats in ID throughout the country, he was very good friends with Dr. Fauci, by the way, uh, who had the honor of meeting two times at St. Michael's. Um, you know, a lot of questions that are being asked by my patients are like, can I get the virus if I get the vaccine? Remember, this is just a piece of the virus particle. It's not a live virus. So no, you cannot get infected, but it can prevent you getting the virus for by 95%. And even those people who do get the virus, they don't develop complications from the virus. So in other words, if you get the vaccine, your chance of getting hospitalized are only 5%, which is amazing. And the Moderna vaccine, actually, they showed that nobody got hospitalized. Mm -hmm. So I think this is very important for you guys to know. And hopefully we're looking at around, I would say, mid-March to April, where we'll be able to get a lot. And the more people that get it, we'll have a great end of the summer and look forward to a great, great, great fall. But please wear your masks, wash your hands, and keep yourself socially distant for now. And then, God willing, at the end of the summer, we should be looking good. We should be looking forward to a good fall. And next year's Thanksgiving and next year's Christmas is gonna be very different. Absolutely, and I really wanna emphasize that it's important to ask questions. Ask questions, it's okay. We might not have answers to those questions, but we'll find out. No question is stupid. No question is, uh, you know, something that, you might be asking a question that represents maybe what 50% uh, of the people who want to know the answer to. I might want to know the answer to. Just ask questions. Uh, we're, this is a learning process and we're all in this together. So thank you so much for joining uh, us again today. And we look forward to speaking to you again and we'll give you some more updates coming up. Thank you so much. Have a good thank evening. Thank you. Happy good holidays. Evening.